So you've wanted to try printing an ABS, but you've heard horror stories of it coming off the bed and layer delaminations during mid-print and all kinds of terrifying things. So I'm going to discuss some of my opinions on ABS and also give some tips for it. So first of all, I'm not going to beat around the bush. ABS can be a total pain in the butt to print with. Although, once you've figured out some of its quirks and annoying properties, it's actually not horrible to print with. One of the big problems I have with ABS besides the smell, which I combat by just keeping a window open on the other side of my room, is the fact that it will warp. As you guys can see on this print, if this is approximately flat and level, it's anything but flat and level. I'm going to get into the causes of this in a minute, but this is probably the biggest problem people have with ABS is prints warping. In the case of this, I was running the print with a 0.8 diameter nozzle and I ran two perimeters, which would have been the equivalent of a 1.6 millimeter wall thickness, which would be four passes with a 0.4 nozzle. That's way too thick. So the force of that caused the end of the print to literally rip itself up off the build bed. Ironically, the other side didn't warp as bad, but it still warped. Also, the build surface may not have been perfectly clean. I did go back and clean it, reduce the number of perimeters, and it helped. So, first thing is, don't run any more perimeters than you need to. On average, I will run two, and when I'm printing an AVS, I'll actually drop the infill as well, because the infill when it shrinks, it's going to try and pull the print in, which would then cause the part to want to lift off the bed even more. Another really annoying problem with ABS is the fact that it likes to warp mid-print and it'll create these nasty looking voids that you can see here on this part. Usually this is caused due to a draft while you're printing and right here is a window that leaks a lot so to combat that i will actually set up this lovely looking chunk of acrylic or perspex or lexan or clear plastic and put that in front of my ulti maker right here and that really helps to cut down the drafts the other thing that will happen when you have a print like this is you'll get weak layer bonding that you'll hear as this crunching sound when I press on the model. That's not a good thing. One other thing that can happen is if you're printing a really large print, like in the case of this Marvin that I haven't completed, is you'll notice actual areas of high stress in the print, in this case where the ears are, and they meet up with this part were so big relative to everything else that it literally split the plastic and it's actually gotten a little bit worse it's pretty much leveled out at this point but it literally had so much force it ripped the layers up so what i'm going to do on this is come along and probably put some abs juice on it sand it smooth and go from there but this is an extreme example. This thing is huge. To give you guys a size comparison, it was scaled in Simplify 3D to the maximum my printer can do, and it was cut in half so it can sit on a wall, but that's all information for another time. But I did bring that up to show that prints can actually have issues when they're done and they're cooling. So the big thing is making sure you don't have any drafts in the build area, and if you do have splitting, you might be able to correct it with some filler and some sanding. It's not ideal, but it helps. One other thing that I found that helps when you're done printing an ABS model to sort of prevent that, it won't stop it in all situations, is to come along and either vapor polish the model shortly after printing or spray it down with acetone. Both obviously need to be done in a well-ventilated, safe area away from ignition sources, but this is a part for at Mark the Maker on Instagram for one of his 3D printers. I met him at the Maker Fair, super awesome guy. 
And he asked me if I could print this up for him with my printer in ABS, and I said, sure. So the reason why this model has kind of a whitish look to it in spots is strictly because of the fact that I sprayed the model down with acetone when it was done, and that helped kind of melt the layers together, if you will. It, it didn't necessarily smooth it, but it definitely helped prevent any post-printing cracking issues. Now, the last thing when printing an ABS is don't be scared of it. This is the Firefly Serenity model that I downloaded off Thingiverse, and you guys have probably seen on my Instagram. And it actually printed up pretty well for being done in ABS. I did it at 0.25 layers, two perimeters, 10% infill, I believe, and except for a little bit of cracking like here and I think somewhere up in this area on the nose, it actually turned out really nicely. I'm at the moment running Matter Hackers Pro, I believe it's Pro, Matter Hackers ABS that's a closeout, and I have to say it's nice. Definitely don't buy cheapy no name ABS because like any other cheapy no name filament, you don't know what kind of impurities are in there and things like that. And for all you know, they're using chopped up bits of leftover reject plastic, which doesn't always, but could help cause problems like this cracking. This is done in like the world's cheapest ABS I could find on eBay. And it printed decently, but you, you can definitely tell it probably was not the world's highest quality feedstock. So the last thing when printing on ABS is your build surface. In my case, I run BuildTac, and I am gonna try, eventually once I get the Thingomatic up and going again, I'm gonna try printing on what's called G10 composite. It's a fiberglass-like material. It's used in the UP 3D printers, it's used in the CEL Robox, and it's actually quite popular for printing on ABS with. I've never tried it, I'm gonna give it a try. I bought two of them, one so I can put a bunch of little holes in it, like a perf board, see if that makes any difference versus just a straight flat board in terms of grip, but that's gonna be another project for another time as I'm currently still trying to figure this guy out. I got it working, but there's other stuff, so that's a different story altogether. But I hope this helped you guys when it comes to printing with ABS. In conclusion, the big things are high quality filament. Make sure you don't have any drafts. Make sure that the build chamber temperature stays somewhat consistent, which is helpful. And lastly, make sure that if you do notice any potential problems with cracking, that you polish the model to smooth it over. Shortly after printing, it won't solve all the problems, but it might help prevent areas that are somewhat weak from delaminating as you're gonna make the outside more of a, a, a uniform one piece versus a bunch of little layers that can do this with each other. So I hope that helped you guys. If you have any questions or comments about printing ABS, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this. And I'll see you guys next time on Make It With Calvin.